Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormer and there's a couple bins I'd like to check in on today. Both of the bins that I'm referring to actually originated from when I ended the May 12th bin of mixed worms. That May 12th bin ended a week ago today, which was like the 9th of November right there. Okay, so this is right there on the box, 10th of November. And I kept the old sticker on there just to show its origin, but as you can see, the bin right here that theoretically ended a week ago now is actually continuing. And it's because even though the worms were all removed from the material, I continue to treat that as something worth managing for a little while longer at least. Because I treat that as having a whole bunch of baby worms in it. And then time, I think, if we give those little guys a chance to hatch out of their cocoons and emerge then we'll be able to increase our worm population rather than just going ahead and starting into the use of those castings right away we'll uh we'll try to reclaim that little batch of worms get them reunited with the rest of their family and then start treating that as a batch of finished castings and the uh the adult worms that used to reside in that system were relocated a week ago into their new home here it's a plastic tub like I usually use but inside of it is a fabric bag and it's the worms in here that I plan to feed today the cocoon nursery is not in need of food but I like to check on it just to make sure things aren't really running amok in there so we're gonna get these up on the bench and see what's going on I'm starting in the cocoon nursery now you shouldn't get your hopes up because it's not gonna be like a whole box full of baby worms that we get to check out it's a it's a box that someday will have baby worms in it but right now the only thing I expect to find in here if I were to look for them but I probably won't even see any who knows are the cocoons themselves that I'm tending to if we spot one or two that'd be interesting huh that's interesting too is we just actually zeroed in on a couple straggler worms that were left behind in the migration so these guys will ideally be reunited with the rest of their family in a short period of time maybe I'll hold off on covering this back up until such a time that we get back into the other bin where these little guys belong to feed it and then we'll release them and we can put this plastic back where it belongs so this might be a good chance just to round up any worms I spot. They must be coming to the surface in pursuit of the moisture that collects there because of those plastic because that plastic covering that was on there. That's why there's they're all over that piece of plastic. The plastic is um kind of forcing like a terrarium effect is how I refer to it sometimes. If you're unfamiliar with what a terrarium is, it's basically a little um, enclosed container that you grow a plant in and the plant never needs watering because whatever moisture is in the sealed container remains in there on a hot day the moisture evaporates turns to gas and then once the temperature drops it'll condense in little droplets of dew and the cycle just repeats over and over hmm. Did I bump into the camera so my only reason for checking in on these so-called cocoon nurseries is not really to pull out straggler worms, although it totally makes sense to do so. It's more about the moisture, just to make sure that things aren't suddenly, for whatever reason, drying out rapidly. And it does feel like this stuff's in pretty decent shape, nothing to really worry about. Nice and cool, nice and damp. And I think that was part of the reason, too, that I had sort of mounded it up over here, is that... I don't even know why I thought hmm. I thought I might have done that just to kind of reduce its potential surface area for shedding its moisture or maybe maybe just remain that way after we had migrated the worms out and then we just set this aside and didn't worry about leveling things off or mounting things up I just thought that if I pulled the material back a little bit, we might be able to get a more thorough coverage with the plastic once we put it back on. But we'll put the plastic back on 
in a short while after I've released the little wormies that are sticking to it right now that are hanging out on it. So there's not much to do here other than cover it up. But we need to uh, we need to release those little guys into the uh, the other bin that we're going to feed and where the other other worms live. So let me get that one out here on the bench and we'll get to releasing those wormies, giving them some food. Hopefully after a week they're doing um they're doing good in that vermi bag tote. So let's get over there now. So for the most part we rounded up the mixed worm population that I had and relocated them into here. Obviously those stragglers that we just collected off the plastic of the cocoon nursery somehow evaded my collection efforts. I guess that's a nice thing. There's always that opportunity later to to get them into the game. And you know what? I think now will be the time to get those little guys in here and not have to worry about them. Here too, you can see beneath those two pieces of plastic bubble wrap that I had covering things, there's a good amount of moisture. Hopefully I get all these worms. I should take a closer look just in case there's a really tiny baby or something mixed in with these little guys. Wouldn't want to see the little guy dry out. But then again, I'm going to be putting this right back onto the cocoon nursery now. And it'll just pick up where it left off as far as being moist. So let's do that now too. So the stuff that I got to feed with today is a few, few frozen chunks of pumpkin. You can see even before I froze it, it was starting to develop mold and it was getting really nasty. I think I froze it just in time before it really started making up a real stink. And some coffee, including the coffee filter. So we need to make a big enough void in here to drop in today's food. Let's see here. I guess I must have had a few coffee filters laying around, which I used as sort of a top covering here. And I think we could actually supplement the bedding by using those right there. These pieces of cardboard are holding up pretty nice. When I set up the uh, migration of another bin just yesterday, I had done the same thing. I had taken a couple pieces of cardboard like this with perforations to separate the feeding area that I'm trying to lure the worms into from the other side of the bin that's got the finished castings in it. Moisture level is really nice in here. These two pieces of plastic are doing a nice job. It's just that with the fabric um, material I worry about the stuff on the edge possibly getting a little bit too much um, airflow and drying out but it doesn't seem like that's the case. There doesn't seem to be any reason for concern here. Sometimes when I build a new bin, I, uh, I include food in it. Sometimes I don't. And with this bin, I believe I did. And I believe in my tracking spreadsheet, this bin already counts as having been fed once, even before the worms got in there, because I did put food for the worms down the middle. Other times I don't. Other times I just launch the worms into a fresh container that's not been fed, and let them sort of uh, equate themselves with the carbon and bedding materials in the system before I start feeding them. They can always feed on the carbon based bedding materials anyway. But since there was food laid down into the middle of this bin, I was just thinking we might spot a worm ball, kind of a little worm party Perhaps if we find a piece of food that they really enjoy. I thought earlier I had caught a little worm ball in my in the corner of my eye down here through the stuff that I just picked through. But maybe I was just seeing a whole bunch of this bedding material. All this light colored bedding material, it's uh, hard to spot the worms in. When you got a big batch of almost all finished castings, nice dark black gold, see the worms in that stuff pretty easily but in here they seem to blend right in with all the paper shreds and everything even down here pretty good moisture so I don't think we have anything to worry about as moisture is concerned somehow I guess the combination of uh, those two pieces of plastic on top I guess combined with 
the bag being inside of a plastic tote versus the bag just hanging in a wooden frame, for example, where it would get a lot more airflow, I guess. Seems like we've got a pretty good uh, moisture retention capability here in this system. So we're going to uh, start building up their feeding area. I think that new coffee filter that comes with the coffee that we're going to feed today can take the place of what these two coffee filters were doing, covering the top surface. It's not only just top covering, I kind of like to mark where I last fed using pieces of uh, usually a piece of coffee filter. So once we feed the coffee and we got that filter left over, we'll use that as partial top covering to go hand in hand with these two chunks of cardboard. So let's drop in the food. But you know what? First, I'm going to put in a little bit of supplemental bedding. Not that the system really needs any more bedding, but just have it for me anymore to always include a nice dose of fresh bedding to go with each feeding. And the bedding that I've got is in this little tub. It's all pre-made stuff, stuff that's been sitting here in this little tub for a couple weeks now. Nice and damp, it's just a combination of shredded paper and cardboard. I've also got leaves in here, which means more leaf stems. <laughs> then I do introduce microbial life into here, so I use finished castings to do that, and then I feed it with some juice that melts out of frozen foods that I feed the worms. So I'm guessing that the worms will appreciate this type of sort of broken in bedding a whole lot more than say, you know, a fresh piece of paper such as this one here that this coffee is in. All right. So sprinkle a little coffee in here. Drop in some of their food. This stuff really sticks together. I was having a hard time busting it free of each other. It was just in one big lump. And I had to uh, run my knife under the hot water so that I can get it to sort of pierce the <laughs> little gap between them so I could separate them from one another. Um, but this looks like a pretty generous portion, i got to admit. We've got ourselves a little bit more coffee that we can feed. And I mean, it does look like a lot, but I, I know for a fact that there's a whole lot of moisture caught up within these big chunks of pumpkin, too. And if all that moisture were to flow right out, which it will actually do very soon, as soon as this starts, stuff starts thawing out, it's just going to emit a whole bunch of moisture. So I'm glad we put that bedding under there. The bedding's already damp, all that paper and shreds of cardboard and everything. But it's not totally soaked, so it'll still be able to suck in a little bit of moisture into itself. So let's begin... You know what, even though it's not something you need to add every single time you feed, there's no harm in giving them a little bit of grit, which is something that the worms, as well as other animals that have gizzards, they need that in their um, belly <laughs> to help break down the foods that they're consuming. All right. Yeah, right, right there, that's like a chunk of the food that I had placed into the bin. I don't even know what that is. It's a funny thing. You can never tell what something in the bin is if it doesn't have very clear visible signs of what it is because it's odor. There's no odor. There's absolutely no odor in here even though I had placed in all kinds of food for these little guys at some point. Maybe I don't even know when. At some point after I built the bin but some at some point prior to introducing the worms. Um, I added some food to this system. Might have been pumpkin, who knows. So, I think this bin's off to a nice start. It seems to be doing well. I'm also glad that it's got that zip top, because with these blue worms, it doesn't happen all the time. It, it did sort of startle me when it did happen recently. And it might have just been because it was bad weather on the way or whatever, but I don't know what trips off these blue worms to want to flee or to run or climb or whatever. So it gives me a little peace of mind to know that I can simply zip the top of this container and not worry about coming back to a, uh, a bin surrounded by dead worms all over the place on the floor that have um, just kind of followed their impulse and decided to climb out of the bin and only found themselves in a really sticky situation out on the dry surface. All right, 
I like this. Things are looking pretty good. So we're going to get this thing covered back up again, more or less the way we found it. I kind of like this idea of using um, dual coverings where it's not just airflow around the entire perimeter of the whole single sheet, but also allows for a little bit of airflow right in the smack in the middle of the container too. And the moisture retention of the two even probably allows things to sort of soak through on this piece of paper and um, it's like best of both worlds, so I kind of like this. So that's where we stand now with my mixed collection of worms. Blue worms, I treat it mostly as a blue worm box, um, but it also has red wigglers and European night crawlers in it. But uh, yeah, I think things are off to a good start here. Hopefully they enjoy the pumpkin meal that they just got. And um, then I guess we'll wait another week or so, check back in, see how things are progressing in here. And uh, maybe in a couple weeks we'll even start seeing baby worms starting to show up in that uh, cocoon nursery. So that's it for today, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's always really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.